The future of medicine. What is the actual future of medicine? Let's find out here today. I'm opening this discussion. That's what it should be. You see here a bunch of doors. Choices, right? Will we have choices? And hope you like the new lighting, by the way. The lighting's very nice. And just so you know, I think light is necessary for that of the medical empire as well. And that's what leads us keep moving into the future is the need to shed light on the topics that are of need of the diseases that are of need in treatment. Those are the things we want to focus on. So what is the actual future of medicine? So we see things like autism. We see things like cancer. Uh, on the rise and autism becoming like literally 1,500% increase. I showed this in a presentation uh, I'll be doing on this channel. And then cancer rates almost every one in three, which is absolutely insane, right? And probably someone you know at this point, anybody I talk to here, you likely know somebody maybe in their family that's dealt with cancer or some sort of autoimmune condition. So that's not good. That's often increasing moving into the future. So then we're going to see a lot of mental cognitive issues like uh, depression and anxiety, uh, very common, especially starting at a very young age, which you can say about pretty much everything else like dementia and Alzheimer's, which we see as young as like 20, 30, starting to grow and uh, their brain malforming literally by the foods that they're eating, by the things that they're exposed to in their environments, environments that being external and internal. Internal is where the food is going, right? So food being a, a topic that's more common now than not just drugs or technology, right? So what do we have still in the universe? We have superbugs. Uh, we see superbugs growing in China uh, and it's becoming virtually impossible to destroy these superbugs because any antibiotic cannot kill them. Uh, they're absolutely immune and these bugs become smarter uh, than us really because they become stronger and stronger and stronger through learning uh, what our antibiotic is doing and overusing them, which we do often in hospitals and throwing them around like candy when they're not always necessary. Uh, overusing them will only make them stronger and that's what we call superbugs, which is bound to actually grow more than cancer and uh, outbeat the cancer deaths, believe it or not. So then we'll also see things like heavy metals. Uh, heavy metals is not talked about often in both natural medicine and uh, mainstream medicine. And heavy metals stay in the environment for a very long time, uh, longer than plastic. And these things can get into chemical pathways within the body and act as minerals. Uh, therefore getting to areas of the body where they should not be and causing disruptions and uh, mimicking the effects of minerals but also destroying a lot of things in its path you see people using fluoride in their toothpaste that's a heavy metal um, and then that goes into the water uh, supply when you brush your teeth for example uh, but it's also sinking into your bloodstream right uh, it's in the water it's in it's and what else is in the water a lot of other heavy metals that's what your water filter is supposed to do but how could you help the heavy metals in the environment and uh, what, what are they spraying in the clouds I mean these are questions these are just questions right and so then we have radiation all right so we have all this green and smart technology and that's surely to rise of course as more and more people are buying it and more and over it's getting very convenient to buy these things uh, it's not rare anymore you can basically like even let's say I'm looking at this uh, computer monitor right here most people can just use a TV screen now they don't even need to buy a monitor it's becoming more convenient to buy these smart technologies that uh, do pretty much everything you can tell it what to do and it will respond so think about how that may apply to medicine. You know, if you want something done, is somebody going to take their hands of heat, their healing hands and, and apply it on you? Or is it going to be some robot? Is it going to be Alexa? Is he going to order something to your door? And is it going to do it for you? You know, all these questions to ask. Um, but is that really humane? Is it something that will actually help us? Um, will it make us dependent on this sort of device? Uh, questions to ask, always questions. Radiation is something like EMFs, uh, and EMFs can even be supposedly detonated from a nuclear bomb if there were ever to be a war situation, which I mentioned uh, soon here. But radiation can also do a lot of dangerous things like heavy metals, and they're both sometimes related. 
actually. So then we have viruses, right? Viruses will spread uh, far and wide, especially since most people are consuming the same foods if they're talking about the fast food chain. So if it goes into, let's say, McDonald's, which serves how many million people worldwide, uh, it's going to spread very, very fast at that rate. Um, and again, if it's something like a super bug, it'll be very, very hard to take out. And if people have already destroyed immune systems or impaired immune systems, or whatever you like to say, uh, basically, they're more prone to these viruses that are present within the environment. So then, you know, that being said, you had the spread of America to the rest of the world. And with that comes a lot of fast food. Uh, you know, America has a lot of disease rates that we don't see anywhere else. And we have a lot of fast food here, but it's also spreading to the rest of the rest of the world. And so they have these cultures, right? Like the ancient Chinese uh, diets, the ancient Jap Japanese diets, and those are very uh, actually healing in many cases we see you know macrobiotics rice diets and stuff like that can be very healing but then when we're starting to introduce all these fast food chains we start seeing a different change uh, and you see the population that's in China uh, you see all these big pharmaceutical companies uh, lobbying for certain interests in these countries that are of growing populations like India which is actually going to outbeat the US uh, soon so that will be insane uh, to see, especially since India supposedly grows a lot of our natural medicine like turmeric and uh, ginger, both very strong anti-inflammatories in the same family uh, of, of plants. So then we see uh, with that all these different countries, more foreign influence uh, by particularly for the US, it would be Israel and China. Uh, these countries, we give a lot of money in foreign aid. China, it's more the obvious one because everything's made in China. Uh, and a lot of the bad fast food products that you may see in, let's say, like your dollar stores uh, would come from China as well. Even meats can come from China, surprisingly. Uh, but like people want to get what's cheap. And so that's often the case. And being that there's less food grown here, there's going to be less food grown here. So that's what makes this important to note right uh, it's because we don't grow a lot of things in the u.s other than grain wheat uh, which is a grain <laughs> and then you have soy and then you have corn which is also considered a grain to some people uh, so it's like you know what are we growing is it all just uh, mass carbohydrates and then soy which can be inflammatory if it's processed a lot uh, there's the, you know there's a lot of speculation on behalf of that so are we going to grow other things like california we see has a, a higher vegetable intake um, and they have like avocado toast on every street corner and you see the the growing demand for avocados and it's causing Mexican farmers to do wars and stuff and cartels and that's in recent news. Uh, so just see what's going to happen uh, down the road as uh, diets become more trendy, promoting different foods. Um, and you see maybe the U.S. will start growing a bit more foods now that they're approving uh, marijuana to be grown and different hemp products. Uh, just to make it sure uh, hemp is not marijuana, but they're in the same family, I believe. So just uh, something to keep in mind, CBD and THC, completely two different things. Uh, just get yourself familiar with those if you are not already, because that's a growing field in medicine, medical marijuana, hemp, uh, hemp oil, CBD oil, those things are growing. You see people claiming, oh, we got the best of companies. Uh, it's always these claims uh, through uh, the internet and people buying more things from the internet you see for like the vaping, for example, I made a documentary about this, but people buying vapes online became popular, right? So online shopping is growing. That means more people are going to get their health products online. So then you see that the bees are dying uh, within the environment and bees. Uh, Albert Einstein said, if the bees go, we go too. So <laughs> that doesn't sound so good to me. Um, but with the bee population dying, there's a lot of pesticides, there's a lot of herbicides that may get in their way. So that maybe is a, is a potential reason as to why um, that is happening. And some people have found direct correlations, but there's a lot of different toxins in our environment. Again, being heavy metals, it could be radiation, effect, especially affecting smaller organisms <laughs> as it is because we see a lot of studies on bigger organisms. So just how much is it affecting uh, all the smaller organisms and animals and plants with that, right? So you have all these towers and stuff next to farm fields. I mean, as you see in China, uh, all the industry uh, plants and stuff 
the industry plants, not the plants on the ground. Uh, the smoke falls onto the farmland and it causes a lot of contamination. We see uh, foods contaminated like cacao, uh, which is known as a superfood. So superfoods getting contaminated. Maybe they are purposely sabotaged. Um, you never know. Uh, you see the case about Chipotle uh, and how they had E. coli in the food and, and uh, stuff like that. So then we have uh, using 5G internet. So internet is growing in usage. Uh, and especially among the future generations, the internet may be all there is to which uh, you can get access to pretty much anything, uh, which therefore puts doctors out of business, uh, basically, because you can search up anything you want and it exists, right? So, um, but 5G internet is more special because what we have currently is more of a 3 4 4G uh, network, which uh, is not as fast, but can still work really well. They want to make this faster. They want to make it to where there's 5G meters everywhere in your home, in the car, in the towers. It spreads far. There's always coverage. Um, to some people that sounds good, but when you look at the studies, we also see rates of cancer. So uh, again, that would be considered a form of radiation. So supplementation on high qu quantity, uh, you see people already supplementing. Uh, you see medications. I mean, people. you ask some people how many medications they're on. It's like, oh, I'm on 15. Uh, so talk about supplements. Instead of eating the food, they feel like they can supplement it. And some people swear by supplementation when, uh, you know, sometimes it could be very conflicting evidence as to if it's actually helping you. Uh, and you got to keep in mind you're taking some one component or two components maybe out of food and taking them by itself uh, when they're supposed to be within a food, usually nature designs it in a package for a reason. Uh, and you need certain requirements to absorb certain vitamins and nutrients uh, that are important for the body. So uh, supplementation of high quantity, are we looking at quality? Uh, so then we have raw, right? Raw foods on the rise. Uh, I'm predicting this because of smoothies, uh, because of juices. People are buying blenders and these things may become even more efficient to buy. Um, however, I'm not sure of that. I just know when it comes to healing, uh, that's going to be a, a main factor in, in natural medicine, uh, in lifestyle medicine, in, in different forms of medicine, naturopathic, uh, functional, very common one now, integrative, uh, that is my own. Uh, but you know, we're all kind of connected here. That's, that's the whole point of integration. That's the whole point of health, meaning whole. And so uh, getting smoothies, it's like putting a whole package uh, of your own, like all the foods that you want to put into something and you get it all, you know, you get all the nutrients in one package and that seems like it to be a benefit for many people. And then maybe there's less supplementation. You could spend more money on those, uh, those smoothies ingredients it could be of high potency. It could also be of high sugar and, you know, it could also be, um, the people can use dairy and, uh, that can cause some issues, you know, there's so many things that you could obviously just go on, but generally speaking, we see smoothies, we see juicing rising, um, juicing might be a little bit tougher for people, uh, raw foods are generally included because you don't cook something and then put it in the, in like the Vitamix, for example, but uh, people do make soups, they make ice cream in these as well. So that makes it easy for them to do that as well. And then you have salts, you have crystals, people use this on their skin, they may use it um, for beauty care applications, not just for food uh, purposes, you know, but but you know, I have a salt lamp in the back here, uh, where it basically is filtering out the air, uh, releasing those ions that are to help you it's different things to circulation. Uh, people believe in this a lot and there's a lot of salesmen now out there going out there just promoting these things alone saying oh it's done this it's done that look at your balance when you have uh, crystals on you when you have negative ion bands on you right there's different uh, ways that they sell these products and it is definitely growing uh, you see that there's water uh, the importance of water because you are doing smoothies you're doing juicing you're doing all these liquid forms uh, water will then be of importance and we know that that can just heal by itself, right? So uh, non-food and drug products, basically, both not food nor drug. Uh, so then you have transplants, you have a general denaturement, uh, but you see people transplants, um, 
maybe more easily to get. Maybe we're creating these transplants in labs, maybe in, in, in settings where it's like basically all technology. <laughs> but uh, you see people of the more elitist status uh, of higher money getting transplants more often to keep themselves younger. Uh, you see uh, trans people, people who are transitioning uh, to any degree, whether that be in diet, whether that be in gender, whether that be in whatever it is now. Um, it's very common theme and it's definitely among the trends, right? And whatever the trends go, that's where a lot of this future goes. So um, with that can come a lot of distortion as to what is right, what is wrong, what is the right path for me, what is it that I should be doing, and oftentimes it also relies on uh, their coming about, you know, how were they raised uh, to, to feel that way so about the world they were around and it's not just the parents it's also like all the, the other factors that are in their life like not just the smartphones but the tv and everywhere you look there's advertisements most of them being food and drug or disease related uh playing on the mind very often without uh the self-responsibility in health i would say then you see uh there's going to be potential collapses and war there's always going to be a collapse uh, time and time again, we see cycles upon cycles in the economy. We see uh, the U.S. is in debt. We see uh, the Bank of uh, of Germany causing a lot of ruckus because that's a very big bank. We see it in Canada. We see it all around the world. These these banks are having a hard time. They have to fire people, and it's like they're getting ready for something big. But how it just can't be sustainable, being that we're in debt at this rate, and basically nobody can fix it uh, except uh, maybe uh, better economics, if if you will. Uh, but I don't study economics. I study health, and the reason why that's important is because. In a such situation, which is bound to happen to some degree, and war for that matter, uh, people's health are affected. You know, drug prices may skyrocket uh, with that debt, and that may mean more insurance for people and more dependence, if not the self responsibility. And that is often out of necessity, where you can talk with your neighbors for, per se and maybe connect with them and say, oh, well, you know what? We should band together. You know, we, we should stay more together. A lot of neighbors right now, I feel like, are not talking to each other. Is it just me that feels that way? I don't know. But neighbors, uh, at least in my neighborhood, we don't really talk that much with each other uh, about the world around us um, or, or just hang out. I mean, back then in the 80s, supposedly, you know, you'd let anybody in. Now it's like you hear a knock on your door. It's like, whoa, who's here? You know, get, get, get the sword. <laughs> so uh, there's a funny comedy skit by Sebastian Maniscalco, if you want to check that one out. But anyways, then you have uh, this idea of one, right? So it's not just the green and the smart technology. We have this idea of one. So maybe one fast food chain, one bank to go to, one type of car, one type of this, one type of that. Uh, it's something to just be focused on right because like this is the better way of life so take this one and they may say for cure for example like the cure for cancer and the cure for cancer ensuring that there's one cure that would be for cancer even though we see there's so many things that create cancer in the first place and there's so many things that actually within nature you can just look outside actually i mean but you don't actually see what's in the tree for example but there's components all over nature that uh, are anti-cancer so it's like you have this war going on uh, in the inside that people don't see and that comes light uh, so then you have uh, grass fed being a common theme uh, so meats being a, a subject now uh, with different diets promoting meat not just bashing it uh, and then you have the diets that do uh, say well you know meat is still not good for you you should stay away but grass fed is definitely a label that is growing and you see that in stores but guess what it's not really an FDA regulated term. So you can throw hay, for example, hay uh, at an animal and it'll, you can call it grass fed, uh, but organic can more so ensure, but they can still eat vegetables that may be uh, like soy or corn that are not necessarily healthy for the animal because the animal can convert grass to omega-3s to make the animal healthier than hence you healthier because it's kind of converting the vitamins for you to which you then consume it. Uh, even though it promotes less food overall for human consumers. Uh, that might be one to think about because uh, I know some people don't always get that in the first try, but basically 
if you just fed people the grain itself, let's say you're feeding an animal grain, let's say you fed the people the grain itself rather than feed it to the animal and then feed the animal to us, uh, you create more food, actually. Um, but maybe you'll say, oh, well, it creates less nutrition. Uh, yeah, well, you know, t take another look at that. You know, how much nutrition are you really getting? And is it actually beneficial? You know, there's different questions to ask and we can't be so set in stone unless we've really done the research ourselves through the internet and then also uh, validated that through, you know, t trial and error, experimentation, uh, different sides, different perspectives will always help. So then you have technology uh, growing. So even things like electric cars, like Tesla, for example, I mean, you just look at those cars, uh, the technology in them, it's just amazing. You could see it's like, why haven't we been doing this? Uh, and I know this first firsthand, actually, uh, you know, like these cars are amazing and uh, they, they tell you what to do. They get mad at you if you're too close to something. So it's like, <laughs> that's where technology is going is, is convenience, right? Which is what often people are doing uh, to consume their food right now. So just imagine to the extent it will be in the future. Are people really going to let go and just sit back and relax? I don't know. But you see uh, things like organic rising. So organic means the way the food was prepped. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily nutritious, but it's the way the food was brought up. Um, how it was it was raised essentially and because uh, it's like people you know they consider uh, plants uh, as living beings uh, in, in, in biology but then you see uh, the new age movement growing as well so uh, people saying you know in religion uh, that this that meditation and, and deep breathing may help them uh, new age may also mean communion bringing people together um, there's a lot of different definition definitions for it but you see uh, it growing in music you see it growing in health you see it growing in uh, even politics to a different extent so something to just keep in mind what is new what is the future that's what it's supposed to infer new age new new century new new religion new um, a new time basically uh, for people to live so looking up looking to the future can be good uh, but do we also learn from the past right so then we have more vaccines more chemtrails the chemtrails would be those those things that you see in the sky those lines that are like mm, well what is it actually uh, you know what is it actually uh, you see uh, websites like geoengineeringwatch.com they have a lot of research on that to check out and, and see for yourself maybe you know is it something that we should be concerned about is it something that people are even thinking about <laughs> and then you have vaccines where that's often the case right are you actually thinking about it or are you just trusting them because we've literally tripled the amount of vaccines we've had you know since like the 1980s for example and that may only just increase because we're looking to these things to actively help us then we have uh, more female healers, believe it or not. I'm saying that because, you know, we're moving away from man's medicine. And the nature of the feminine right brain is to be very nurturing, be very there uh, for the person, be very caring, which to me sounds like healing, right? And, um, you know, coming from a guy like myself, you know, I, I can I can I can approve of that message. But no, it's true. I think women um, are the future, actually, of healthcare practitioners. And that may be highly underestimated, but I think that is the truth. Uh, so then we see more messages uh, from nature for our freedom, which uh, would be basically the constitution that is innate, uh, is always pushing ourselves toward that freedom. And we seek it from disease, right? We don't want to be in this controlled system of disease within the body, R regardless of, of law, of politics or anything else. We don't want to be restricted to the fact that there's something inflicting us and affecting us all the time and it's always on our mind it's always uh, um, giving us let's say pain for example right how do you escape the pain uh, we want it to be free from that so that's a matter of freedom not necessarily you know curing the illness uh, maybe freeing ourselves uh, from these restraints from from the disease and that is to cure but uh, more dynamic structures will be made for health clearly in the future. Uh, and I have several of them on its way to show the public. And I think there will be a greater consensus upon those universal truths that we see from nature for our freedom, like bio-individuality, right? Which is just the simple fact that everybody reacts differently. So like, let's say you can't just give everybody Advil and expect it to work or provide the same benefits and then not 
you know, provide the same uh, side effects. I mean, there's always going to be different side effects for each individual. So you can't say that people aren't bio-individual. Everybody's an individual innately. Everyone's innately unique. Bio-individuality is a concept that's being generally more accepted within medicine. So then we have, um, you know, living species. Uh, being leftover species uh, for the future generations. Just think about how we come about in evolution. Uh, this is something to just keep in mind for every future uh, of, of medicine, right? It's like everyone will follow the trends, you know, it's current to what is most commonly used and of growing and of mystery. So like what's most commonly used, it's, it's drugs, it's technology. What's of mystery? Well, aging, right? We want to become immortal, basically. Uh, we were like, hmm, well, can we really do this? Can we do that? Can we do this? Are we thinking of the impossible? Or are we fixing right now what is af actively uh, derailing upon our health, right? Are we, are we right here or are we like somewhere all the way over there that we don't even know where we are and it creates this mist of confusion which is basically your health when it's in disease right is what's going on here i need help uh so while people are always looking elsewhere the truth is the answer always remains present and you see things like telemed telemedicine uh, telemedicine telecoaching uh to tell the doctor maybe I don't know. You tell me. Telemedicine, like like Microsoft support, for example, where where you see the robot, right? You had to talk to the robot before you talk to the person. You know, you ever go on the phone, talk with maybe an insurance company, for example, and they're like, "Oh, well, tell me what your issue is." Uh, I don't know. Anybody you call now, most of the time, it's now like a robot. You don't get the person, and it's like, "I need a person. I need to talk to a person." You know, it's like, I, "Where's the person?" So maybe you're gonna get a robot first before your practitioner saves some time. You know, they're always busy. Doctors are always. Busy. I mean, me just trying to get in contact with doctors. I mean, you know, it's it's not easy. They're always busy. So you might see a robot first before you see your practitioner. Uh, and that might be the way it is, especially if it is through the internet. It's very, very practical to happen. So those are my thoughts on this. And, uh, you know, what is, what is living is definitely going to be uh, left over. And what I mean by that is... Uh, you know, those who are ready, those who are prepared, uh, that is what is the truth will always come into the light and always win at the end of the day. Uh, but that being said, you know, it could take many different cycles to get there. And I don't want people to learn from experience by getting hurt. I want people to learn through awareness, you know, through through seeing, well, what is going on here? Why can't we question the world around us? And then therefore make the decisions around that. I've seen many different videos. I have a video on the channel about my reaction to uh, different college campuses and stuff talking about the future of medicine supposedly. But, you know, my issue with that was it was all about technology. There was nothing that was universally true and uh, in, in, in brought up. Uh, and some things like that to me is like, well, where is medicine actually heading then? You know, it, it's, it's, it's a really a matter of the past and future. It's not just the future uh, because we have these neat truths and we keep looking. And the problem is that dependence within itself causes uh, a lot of different issues, right? Like saying, I can't do it. I'm not enough. I'm not sufficient to heal my condition. I don't have the right tools. And the truth is you can, you can, you need to have faith in yourself that you can, right? Like if you have cancer, you have to have faith in yourself and say, I can defeat this, right? I can do it. Nobody uh, should stop you, but that's the, that's the deal, right? <clears throat> uh, Roosevelt said, right? Nothing to fear, but fear itself. We are the ones that create such. And we are the ones that also create the drugs. We're the ones that also create uh, all these different technologies and things that exist. So to me, it's important that the future of medicine relies within that truth, with, within nature. Um, and that's not just coming from someone who promotes more of the natural medicine uh, setting, uh, but also someone who sees this medical empire that it is, but notices it's not really working. And so people are going to notice that. And what are they going to do? Uh, you know, they may still head down a similar path that we are now, but there will be people like me speaking out about it. And that's what's going to cause change is realizing what is it that we're doing now? And what is it that we could do differently? So agree to disagree or agree to agree, whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. That's what's going to help us move forward in the future is having that opinion of our own and having that ability to seek outside the box for 
times where we really need it and this is a time where we need to think outside the box like for example free ourselves from the box that restricts us and puts us in a state of disease this is Corey Edmund and Gerlot nature's the answer thank you goodbye Thank you.